Uh, good evening. I'm going to call. Are we ready to go? Or is it just me? <laughs> uh, I'm going to call tonight's Planning Commission meeting of May 15th, uh, 2014, to order at 631. And we're going to start with roll call. Uh, my left, please. Mike Luxembourg. Philip Cherian. Ryan Coleman. Mabubul Islam. Cynthia Crafts. Mike Collins, congratulations um, on Beth uh, taking over for Mike Sarawai. Good iron, thank you. All right, has everybody uh, gotten a chance to look at the agenda? Any comments or changes to the agenda? Move to approve. Second. All in favor of approving the agenda? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> uh, agenda is approved. And we had uh, minutes for April 17th and May 1st. Has everybody been able to take a read through those? Yes. Move to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of approving April 17th and May 1st minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, so at this point, we're quickly arrived at our public comment period. If there's anybody that wishes to comment to the commission on uh, anything. Okay. Well, I've got an agenda comment. Paul, That's okay. Come on up. All right. We're, we're going to be a little more flexible tonight. Oh, well, it's the heat. It's the heat. <laughs> it's the cookies. All right. I will do agenda comment. Sure. Good evening, Commission. Paul Stickney at 504-228 Ave Southeast in Sammamish. And um, I sent a PDF to the city a couple days ago, and I don't know whether <coughs> Debbie sent it on of the LID stuff. Mm -hmm. Super. Because yep. here is a copy with some of my highlights that I just want to hand out. Thank you. A bit. <coughs> Um, I had not seen these, got on the Department of Ecology site, and these were available through uh, DOE, and I found them quite interesting as they basically apply to both the urban and the natural side of things concurrently, but they overlap. So tonight, I want to talk a little bit about the environmental side of these LID techniques because tonight is the environment and conservation element. But it's kind of cool because these overlap into mixed use and compact housing and highly efficient use of land which actually promotes environmental quality a lot. So over the past six, eight months I've talked a few times about the town center and when the land use element comes up, we'll talk about these same kind of things in a, in more of a land use context. But tonight they're more environmental context. And, um, oh, I, I needed my copy. Did I give that away? Hold on one sec. Here you go, here. there's two here. No, okay, all right, well, thanks. No, I, I got my copy here. I only wanna cover a few things here, by no means the whole document. But first, I found this quite interesting as it was written from a, a municipality point of view. As it's, so it's not more about educating an individual, it, it's the EPA talking about why should a community or county adopt LID. So I found that quite interesting. And as I read through it, I felt it was very valuable and tied hand in hand with the things going on tonight. And I was unaware this existed. Had you know, any of you guys seen this before? Okay, a few have. All right. To me, some of the key th points are, I like their terminology on the first page about LID mimics and preserves natural uh, drainage to manage stormwater. A very clear description of LID. I like that. On the second page, many major benefits of LID to the environment are about two thirds down the page mitigating climate change, saving energy, reducing air pollution. 
These are all things that LID techniques in construction can be of benefit to the environment about. On the third page, this was something I hadn't heard about but makes a lot of sense. They talk about green infrastructure in the context of stormwater, yes, but they have a second terminology for it in the context of describing networking natural ecosystems and greenway corridors. I think that fits hand in hand with things that we want to do here. I found this very valuable and interesting information. So they have an interesting term. I'm not saying they're right. This is their term. They say uh, considered collectively green infrastructure is an integrated system of natural elements and LID um, practices that which provide broad environmental benefits. So I really, and not to repeat, but I feel this really overlaps well both the environmental and for the land use sections which are coming up. On the next page, they have a very good discussion about smart growth and how LID promotes smart growth. Then they had something else which I'd never seen. They use the term LID again in a different term, light imprint design. And I think that makes a lot of sense from being friendly to the environment as well. On the next page, um, which is the costs of low impact development first page, they talk about how LID typically includes much smaller overall development footprints, reduces the amount of runoff, and um, and increases the amount of natural area. Again, how the two terms, urban and natural, mutually benefit each other, I found interesting in these uh, documents. So the last comment I'm going to make in general is I enjoyed throughout this talking about a, a double purpose of both being environmentally friendly and adding the, the beauty aesthetics and proper building to a site. So I just wanted to share these. I'm not going to take the whole seven minutes. I just feel that these basically apply to many, many of the goals and policies on tonight's sheet and or topics and this sort of uh, complements and enhances a lot of the information that you're going to go over this evening. So that's it. Yeah. Mr. Sidney. I'm assuming the purpose of your sharing the information is to advocate LID, more LID usage in light of town center development in the city? And future development in other designated places as appropriate over time. Because I've been doing some study on stormwater and am not prepared to cite the exact documentation yet, but there is much, much evidence that when there are low impervious soils, which much of Sammamish is, that when the new stormwater regs go in in three, four years, they have to be adopted by the end of 2016, much R4 zoning with current soil status cannot be done. Just a clarification for you. You said low impervious. It's low pervious. Low and, pervious. And yes. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a it's a bugaboo. For no, me. I'd love to get that fixed because <laughs> yeah. and I don't have the kind of ego that if I don't have something right, I'd like to learn. So you know, there's an old adage: when you're green, you grow; when you're ripe, you rot. So you can never, <laughs> you can you can never know everything. So it's good. So I like that, Mr. Collins. Thank you. But but. And I may be not using the terms right, so I'll try to use simple layman's English. The soils on many R4 sites, that unless there is a community stormwater system, which may happen, you know, they're talking a few fairly large, you know, tight lines down Inglewood Hill, possibly others over time. But unless there is a community system, the soils can't take the infiltration. And from what I'm understanding so far is, R4 isn't going to be very feasible once the new standards come in unless there's a community system. Now, I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. So I'm advocating this type of development. Sammamish is the way it is through inherited King County zoning for a 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
Many people here like to preserve the character and the way things are, absolutely. But to preserve the character of roughly 98% of the city, it might be wise to have some fairly significant change in the other uh, 2% to basically accommodate growth and offer different types of housing and lifestyle without impacting the larger share. So this goes hand in hand for both environmental protection and advocating compact, connected, higher, you know, higher amounts of uh, density in the town center in terms of like three and four over one. Some of the things I'm reading are really exciting. There are some studies that find sweet spots in the amount of units per acre that actually can get back to pristine forest condition because of the types of constructions and the roofs and not quite ready with all that information, but when we come in for the land use part, I'll have it. Okay. Any other Any question? Okay. I have a comment for Susan, not for Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, you're welcome. Susan, with respect to LID, I recall as far back as I was part of the commission, for the town center development regulation, we had specific language about LID usage. Then in the stormwater, surface water manuals, we had specific directions for LID usage. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Two weeks ago, in the commission <coughs> meeting, I have heard one of our consultants talking about NPDES phase two permit and mm -hmm. some implications of LID. Yes. I'm, I'm wondering if, if you have enough information or at least to give us a sense of how NPDES phase two is including more of LID than what we already have in our regulations. Yeah, um, I, I don't really have uh, an update for you at that point, but we have arranged for Eric LaFrance to come to your June 5th meeting, and he'll have a lot more information, and you can kind of ask him a lot of questions. He's the most knowledgeable person in the city about that. Okay, that's good. I forgot about it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eric is coming on June 5th, um, but because priorities in his workload changed, he wasn't ap um, available or he wasn't available to fully read the new stormwater comprehensive plan and do a comparison with that and the NPDES. So he may need to come back at a subsequent meeting and talk to us a little bit more about the stormwater comprehensive plan as it relates to NPDES. So just going to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, you wanna Ready for me on the, yeah, Susan Cesar, uh, Community Development. And um, before actually I get into the work program calendar, I wanted to do just a brief report on the city council meeting that we had on Tuesday night. And um, as you recall, we had the handoff uh, from the Planning Commission to the City Council on the Homeless Encampment uh, Ordinance, and um, Vice Chair Blau was there to represent you. Um, he did a fantastic job. Um, it went very well. A lot of thoughtful questions from the City Council. Um, we have a little bit of homework to update some comparison charts and all, but it was very well received, and I, thought, I had the sense that they were very appreciative of all the work that the commission did on that ordinance. We probably had maybe 10 people that spoke uh, kind of on both sides of that issue uh, that evening, and then the public hearing will be on June 3rd, so I would expect a pretty big turnout for that. And then um, we also have the second reading now has been uh, delayed till July the 1st. So the current schedule now is June 3rd and then July 1st for second reading. June 3rd is scheduled for here? It's currently scheduled for here. If the uh, work is done in the city hall council chambers, um, we will evaluate whether to move the location. So it's unknown, but right now it is scheduled for here. How, how many people do you think could fit in there? Um, our city clerk says that she can fit 50, and there's been some discussion about doing some uh, remote uh, access screen so that if we get more people, they'll be able to watch on a t monitor. But stay tuned, we're working on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to update you on was the other, we had another item on there, which was the R1 uh, land use zoning study. And what we wanted was a sense of the council that evening of what they would like to do for a scope of an R1 study. Previously, they had told us to come back with some options. Um, the sense of the council at that meeting was not to proceed with an R1 study at this time. So that's one item that's off of your work program for the moment. Um, what else? We had uh, also a leadership meeting. Uh, 
your chair, uh, Commissioner Coleman, was there via phone, and um, your vice chair was there in person. We pretty much went through your work program and the progress that you've done so far in the comprehensive plan. Um, they kind of made it clear that tree retention is a priority, although we did, based on some concerns that you had expressed and also the council, that um, of not having a break between when we start on tree retention and when we come back in September, we will start that in September after all. So I think that was probably a good change. Um, we went through uh, Klahani and a little bit about the marijuana moratoria that need to be removed or uh, renewed. And we did talk a little bit at that meeting as well on the R1 zoning study, which has now been resolved. Susan, can you go back to the, the marijuana mm -hmm. uh, for a second? Because that's a fun topic. Yeah, that's um, an interesting one. And, and can you can you uh, can you kind of expand upon why that's kind of slipped off the agenda for now? Yes. Um, right now, what we have in effect are moratoria on both recreational and medical marijuana uses within the city. Um, the work program that they previously had adopted had us looking at um, land use regulations uh, during this year, um, but it always would have required one additional extension to the moratoria. Um, I think at this time, um, there is also some other considerations that the council might be looking at. Um, there have been decisions, but for instance, the city of Kent has instituted a ban on recreational, I believe, marijuana, and that has been upheld to the point where it's gone in its appeals. So there are some other things that the council might want to consider in which direction that they want to go. Um, I think we will have some direction from the council at the time we take the moratoria back as to where they want to go, and at that point, if they want us to we may it may show back up on the work program but for now um, it's kind of a lower priority and as of right now there there aren't any locations in the city that are pursuing a, a, a license yes to my knowledge um, there were a few that were on the licensing list initially and the last time I looked most of them had dropped off uh, it doesn't really tell you why whether they didn't meet the criteria or they decided they didn't like that location. So at this time, to my knowledge, we don't have an active application either for a facility in Sammamish. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Could you expand a little bit on the Kahani stuff? There's two items now, and I'm not sure I understand what they are. Sure. Um, we have two things um, to do on Kahani, or. <laughs> <laughs> two large items with a bunch of small items under each and one of them is your is the uh, comprehensive plan amendment that will be occurring this year to move the um, Kalhani potential annexation area from Issaquah to Sammamish and uh, adopt contingent land use and zoning and that will have to be done before the end of the year the bigger work or kind of um, the larger picture work would be to incorporate Kalhani into this work on the two, 2015 comprehensive plan update. So we have kind of a short-term project to enable an annexation to proceed, and then we have a little bit longer-term project to incorporate Kalhani into our comprehensive plan. But what will the commission have to do? Well, we will be bringing to you some potential land use and zoning designations for your review. That's probably the primary um, item for, for the potential annexation area change. Um, as we go through the comp plan, you'll just consider Kalhani along with each of the elements. Um, and it, there may be some catch up because if, we're, if we don't have everything ready for Kalhani, we may bring it back to you and then it will marry up with its uh, different chapters in the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Okay. Susan, just on Klahani issue, when you stated that land use zoning changes, do you yes. mean to say that whatever the zoning right now Klahani has in terms of the usage, that might possibly change, or you mean to say that we would have to formally include land use zoning for Klahani, whatever that is? Yes, whatever it is. And I think in general, we'll be doing a comparison between what the zoning is now and what the closest um, city zoning is. There are likely to be a few issues that arise as people want to have um, something accommodated. Um, and so uh, we've had a couple of inquiries about that. So we'll take a look at any changes that people are, or tweaks that people are wanting to do. And um, in general, I think it will 
basically translate into very similar zone. We'll also do a comparison of how the zones differ in Sammamish versus King County. So for instance, R4 in King County, there's a little bit different mm -hmm. regulations for R4 in Sammamish. So we'll do a comparison of those. Just, just one more question, Eddie. R1 zoning seems to be still on the calendar based on what you just stated earlier about council's uh, interest of not pursuing R1 zoning. So I'm, I'm assuming this topic could be off the That's agenda. correct. Okay. Yes, that just was um, yeah. Tuesday night. So, right. So one thing off the list. Um, okay. If uh, you don't have any more questions on that, I did want to also uh, update you on one thing. Um, as you recall, Kevin Teague, who ha was here doing your filming, he passed away suddenly and unexpectedly last oh, week gosh. on Friday. So um, it was kind of a shock to everyone. We greatly miss him. Um, but I also thought that you might want to sign a book, and I have a condolence book here, should you want to sign that for his family. Okay. So. Thank you for being that direction. Okay, you're welcome. And so now. Sorry. <laughs> Downer, but you know, I thought that you should know. And um, he, Kevin was such a great help and just a cheerful guy. I spent a lot of time here working on the setup and all. So um, it's just to let you be aware of it. Yeah, he brought his own camera to work, um, also to do part of the filming. So um, <coughs> we're definitely going to miss him. Was he a volunteer Susan? or city employee? No, he was a city employee. Susan, I, so is this the gentleman with the spiked hair? Mm -hmm. Yes. With the coat. Yes, fairly young guy, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, we don't really have any details of what happened. Um, apparently last Friday, he just ha passed away of unknown causes. Um, if we find out more, I'd be happy to pass it along. <coughs> but um, yeah, he, it was quite a shock to everyone this week at the city, so. Okay, thank you for kick us off into uh, environment and conservation? Yes. Um, I did want to um, update you a little bit on public involvement and also make an, a quick announcement about recycling. We had talked the last time um, on the environmental element about recycling, and I just wanted to let you know that our contracts right now for the two service providers that we have are good through December 2016. But next week, on Tuesday, the 20th of May, one of the service providers will be coming to City Hall to do a presentation, uh, not City Hall, I guess it would be here, MOC building, to do a presentation on what services they're providing right now. I think is kind of a way to help further explain and, and answer questions, maybe get ready for a new contract uh, renewal in 2016. I know the city will be kind of looking and, and determining whether or not they want to go out to bid again in the, in the next coming year or so. But you're welcome to attend that city council presentation if you want to learn more about what our service providers are doing for Sammamish. Okay. Um, as far as public involvement goes, you know, we were actively updating you with um, our public involvement plan over the fall and the winter. And after January, we kind of slowed down and we took that information that we used uh, to help develop the working draft vision statement. And that was, that was wonderful. Now we're interested in going back to the public to kind of let them know what the Planning Commission has done. We've done several elements already, and we're getting to some of our big hitting elements, the land use element and the transportation element, probably are going to draw the most interest from our community. Those are the most important ones to a lot of people. One thing that we were thinking about doing is um, working at the farmer's market and displaying some eye-catching posters similar to something like this. This is one that we've just, uh, it's an example one that we might be able to use for housing. It may be changed a little bit, but we could blow them up a little bit bigger, draw people into a booth at the farmer's market, put these up at um, areas around the city, for example, at Starbucks or the library, places that we visited in the past during the fall and the winter. And then, as you can see, there's a little icon on the bottom where you could scan your, your phone. It would take you to um, uh, electronic part of our website to answer some questions. We could even have hard copy uh, questionnaires at the farmer's market and have staff available to help answer questions and guide people through the process that's been going on so far at the Planning Commission. I also wanted to 
extend an invitation to any of the planning commissioners that were interested in maybe coming to the farmer's market. I have no dates set up yet. Um, it, it, I still need to work through the, the appropriate city staff to, to find out when we could go and you know how long we could be there. But I'd certainly be interested if any of you were wanting to come and, and be part of that process. Just email me and let me know. And um, I will work with you to set up some times and dates that fit into your schedule. What dates are the farmer's markets? Farmer's market, I believe, starts next Wednesday, but it, we would not be there next Wednesday. I'm thinking maybe more like June or July. But what day of the week? Wednesday? Oh, it's Wednesday, yeah. It's a Wednesday, and it goes till 7 or 8 o'clock, I think. 3 to 8. Somewhere. 3 to 8, yeah. They expanded a little bit. Right. Um, I've mentioned to you that Eric LaFrance is coming back. He'll also be talking to you about some of the work that you did on sustainability as it relates to NPDES and stormwater. He's got some minor... Um, suggested changes to uh, one goal and one policy. Any other questions for me before we go ahead and start um, with Deborah leading on facilitating our um, discussion on the draft goals and policies for environment? I appreciate the overview on our, on our public outreach to, just to keep that fresh in our minds of what we've done and what we're doing. Um, any questions? Oh. Okay. Great, thank you. Good evening, I'm Deborah Monkberg. Um, here to talk to you a little bit about the goals and policies for the environment and conservation element. Um, I think Emily kind of touched on a few things. I think that you've received a, a packet with the draft goals and policies. We developed those based on um, your feedback from our meeting in, I guess it was in late April or mid-April, um, and also looking at regional goals and policies from Vision 2040 and from the countywide planning policies. Um, similar to what uh, Emily just mentioned uh, related to Eric's review of stormwater issues, um, he has reviewed some of the goals and policies in here, but we are um, still going to be working with him on sort of more detailed review of some of the water quality issues here. So some of that may change um, in the future with this element. So I just wanted to highlight that. And um, really what we were hoping to do tonight was just really walk through each of the goals and uh, get your feedback um, on those. If you have specific editorial comments that are non-substantive, we'd love to get those. But if you could send a markup to Emily, sort of separate from this meeting, we'd really appreciate it. I think that'll help us move through things faster. And um, we did get a few comments um, from a couple of the commissioners, which I'm happy to sort of mention as we're going through, or those that sent them, if you want to jump in as we get there. Uh, we've made note of, I think we've made note of all of them in our working copy, though. So um, should we just dive in? Sure. I mean, did you did you just kind of want to walk through these one by one? Yeah, and yeah. Um, I can maybe just start uh, with, with goal one, just to kind of remind you that the idea here was to have kind of a overall kind of uh, a goal that attached um, or identified some of the overarching uh, broader policies related to environmental protection. Um, and then as we go through the element, there were more detailed uh, goals and policies related to specific elements. Can I so ask a procedural question here? I, sure. I just, um, being new, I still, um, so I gather that the tracking sheet helps us keep track of sort of where we've been and what we what we said a week ago or a month ago or whatever. Um, what I was a little I was a, a little unsure. So if it's if there's input, then is it? How do I know? I I, I have trouble keeping track of the tracking sheet. Um, <laughs> and I guess I'm just wondering, would they usually necessarily have been made? Like when when you get new materials, then would would those would that input? Uh, be reflected or not necessarily reflected yet or you know so I guess I just maybe somebody could help me understand a little bit um, well so that we can be as efficient as possible yeah our, our intention um, and you can tell us if we captured them our intention from the last meeting was to capture your comments in here and to show you um, how we tried to respond to them and any additional comments that we get tonight um, Robin is recording and we're going to put in to the tracking sheet. It's a, it's a running list of anything. It is. It, it doesn't, so I guess the draft that we're seeing and the input, I get confused about how those get together. So is the, is the draft usually have the comments that the, the input then incorporated? Yeah, the draft that you're seeing was our attempt to respond to your comments. And if it didn't, that's something we okay. need to hear about as well. And, and, then the, um, and then the tracking sheet will always be a running list of everything we've talked about 
from the beginning. They don't come off once they've been addressed, right? Right. It was the intention. It's just a record. It's a it's, it's a, a kind of a way for okay. us to keep track of it. Thank you. And you. Right. So I would just maybe start with goal one and ask if there's comments. I one comment I have on goal one is just looking at the title itself or the language in the title uh, where we the verb is safeguard and mm -hmm. I'm thinking about instances where environment is severely or fairly <laughs> degraded and we would be in the process of restoring or enhancing context of wetland management I could see restoring and enhancement so I'm just wondering whether safeguard really capture that Safeguard to me, or my narrow interpretation, is sort of protect, mm -hmm. but put, but something already degraded will be enhancing or improving. I'm wondering what would be a better word to also include that kind of restoring and enhancing. So, so are you capability. not satisfied with the word stewardship right in front of it? Stewardship is great, but stewardship to safeguard and I would say like enhance foster. or improve or something add to that so that we can think of restoring is also part of okay safeguard. so safeguard and restore or something to like that restore mm -hmm. okay yeah mm -hmm. makes sense mm -hmm. i agree I'm so safeguard to, and to commissioner collins point stewardship sort of implies some of those characteristics yeah. also mm -hmm. i guess to me the issue was stewardship of what <coughs> stewardship to safeguard and restore Mm -hmm. You so could just take out two safeguard and then yeah. Yeah. be stewardship of the national environment. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. The safeguard alone, of right. course. Is the okay. okay. Let's replace safeguard with something yeah. or not. Just looking for a holistic understanding. Serve as a leader in environmental stewardship of the natural environment for current mm -hmm. QN. Sure. Right. I can't say the rest of it. Current and future generations. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you. And then. Uh, I mean, unless you want to go through each policy, I would just ask if, um, you know, we'll just kind of go down the list if anyone's got mm -hmm. comments on policy one, <coughs> two. Oh, I'm sorry, 1.5? Three, <laughs> four, five. Commissioner Collins. Um, the best... Um, best management practices need to reflect that the, it's the current best balance between the thinking on how to achieve results. And results are the key point, in my opinion. So I'm not quite satisfied with the wording there. I, I, I'm after results. Okay, so um, this was a comment that we received before, and this is the right. text box. Mm -hmm. So best management practices are physical, structural, and or managerial practices that reflect the current best balance thinking on how to achieve results. Right. Is that and Deborah, I kind of wonder if, you know, so one of our goals in this rewrite is to kind of create a more, more succinct, mm -hmm. comprehensive plan. And when I read this, I looked at 1.5 and 1.8, and to me, they're kind of saying the same thing. There's slight nuances, yeah. but I'm wondering if there's a way we can throw them in a blender and come out with. What 1.8 is adaptive management style, and I disagree with that one. So I think there's discussion there. I like best practices. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not trying to get rid of one or the other, but I think together, I think they complement each other when you apply them together. I, I like 1.5. I'm okay, so just let me let me be clear. It's just a comment yeah. that I'm making. I'm not saying get rid of 1.5 or 1.8, but maybe they can maybe it can be a two sentence I, policy. I think there's a way to incorporate both thoughts. I see two different thoughts. I see sure. adaptive management and best management practices. Maybe the comment is how can we incorporate in one mm -hmm. comment instead of two different ones because both are managing management is the key word there. So let me ask a, a, stru a structural question. <clears throat> if we think down the line about how this will be implemented later, you might give us some input as to whether having separate items is good or bad. Because this, this is this is only the start of the process. I don't think that it, I I don't think there's a way to say whether it's good or bad. I separated them out because I saw them as two distinct ideas. That doesn't mean that you can't put them together and that they would still be as meaningful. Okay. Um, 
my understanding of, of, of adaptive management techniques is basically throw things on the wall and see what works. And if it doesn't work, change. Whereas best management practices are, are, are basically already taking that lots of things into, develop, uh, into consideration and coming up with the best practices that are already applied. Well, um, I, I guess my thought here was two things. One is, uh, last time I was here, we had some discussion. I think we were talking about climate change and about how information is constantly changing and the, the technology is constantly changing and that we need to keep up. And I guess I wasn't thinking of adaptive management practices as being kind of just try things and see how it goes, but more that as information becomes better and improved, that we're evolving and adapting to that uh, through the I, future. I think that description is better for best ma uh, in thinking about best management practices. The adaptive management, as it's applied to WIRA 8 and several other things in the area, is basically just, if it's not working, try something different. In, and I've heard of adaptive management also referred to as ACART or all known and reasonable yeah, huh. technologies, right. mm -hmm. which is also a way of incorporating best management practices. So it's sort of like a, a cyclical thing. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I'm not wed to this idea that 1.5 and 1.8 need to be mixed together. But um, Well, uh, so one thought is we do have, uh, when we get further into the um, – I guess it's under climate change. We talk about recognizing that the science surrounding climate change is constantly evolving and tracking best available information. So that's sort of addressing that changing, changing character in climate change. If we, if you feel like what we're getting at with adaptive management is covered already under the BMPs, I'm getting a big nod over there. I'm not well, sure about the rest now of the, with the explanation that you have provided, because there are two distinct topics. One is best management practice management practices are really the inventory of already proven mm -hmm. best management practices, mm -hmm. where adaptive, adaptive is in the process of proving or based on new information, things have come up. So I see merging them into one will dilute or in some cases not provide the right meaning of two separate things. Or, so I, I now see both needs to stay separate. Or you can... In also incorporate a card into best management practices. Yes, um, I was trying. I was doing my best to avoid these acronyms, but yes, we could definitely do that, or we could add just something that to the one point five that talks about recognizing changing technology as part of best management practices. Right. If that gets you, know, you there. You use the continuous improvement language mm -hmm. in terms of adaptive management. Th that is a that's a catch word that people a lot of people know what it what that means. Yeah, that could be. And so. Are we really talking about continuous improvement? Yes. Because if we are, then it is different than best management practices. Because best management practices is a point in time. Continuous improvement is you keep on trying to make it better. Right. Well, that's what adaptive management, that's the idea behind adaptive management is continuing but, to improve. But best management practices also change over time. So I think we're getting a little bit yeah. tied up here in semantics, mm -hmm. and I would yeah, right. hate to get so too They, they, don't, they don't change up. as quickly. <coughs> if... if if adaptive management is a um, lightning rod and is not a good, doesn't kind of convey positive connotation to everybody, I'm happy to take it out and just describe what we mean, which I think we're in agreement on, which is we're continually trying to improve our approach to protecting the environment. Yes? Yep. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't want to add more debate, but I sort of see you have the definition of adaptive management in yep. the box. Yep. That clearly talks about that continual improvement. So in that sense, having that distinct definition and then corresponding uh, EC18 makes sense to me. In the context of this discussion, I see what we meant, but I just feel like outside this room, when public is looking at it, they may not understand those distinctions if adaptive management is taken away. I don't think anybody's speaking to taking it away. I think and we're and speaking. My comment it, it seemed to imply that I, I, that's not what I meant. So maybe I mean Deborah was sort of she, stating yeah. that she, she I was suggesting yeah. taking the words oh, away because I felt like yeah. they were starting to mislead yeah. people, but maybe keeping the content. Um, and in fact, you could even keep I don't know Commissioner uh, Collins, but you could sort of keep some of the language here that we've got here about continuing to improve practices by learning from the outcomes of program activities, and just put that up under that's part of best management. I think we're sort of overworking it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, maybe I, come back so with a draft I'd, I'd like to make a comment here. I think we're getting wrapped around the axle. Mm -hmm. 
we're over indexing on this one specific thing. And Deborah Ashley, to your credit, I think you've described what adaptive management is very clearly. I did not conceive it as throwing stuff on the wall and looking at what sticks and then determining the best approach after that. So let's, in the interest of being efficient, can we proceed without over indexing? Yeah, I think, I think we've given enough feedback perhaps vague and confusing, <laughs> um, but that's what, that's what our job is. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at this and try and come back with something that captures the meaning at any rate, okay. for sure. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> One last comment. It's an overarching comment. I think we've done a good job in this first section about being inspirational. Uh -huh. I've got some comments later where we're, I think we're too, you know, we're too descriptive or proscriptive, okay. but I think here we've done a good job. Okay. 1.6. Go ahead. Um, I, I, at the bottom of it, it says pe people, animals, and plants. I'd prefer to replace those three uh, nouns with uh, uh, the complete cycle or something along those lines. I, I, do, I don't like having a comparison of, of people, plants, and animals in, in the same sentence. I, I, I'd prefer a cycle. That's ambiguous to me. I don't understand yeah, what cycle means. Um, it, it's the ecosystem. It's the, the 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 cycle of life and death and everything else. I I don't want to. I don't want to be. It, it seems, you know, what's what's the weighting for people versus animals versus plants? How do you make an evaluation when there's a trade-off from one to the other? Would living things be a I was just going to say living things or the living ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd prefer something like that versus people, animals, and plants. That's tricky. Leaving out bugs. There you go. What's and that? that's how, that's you, how it you're works. You're leaving out bugs. <laughs> Critters. Aren't they? Aren't they? Part yeah, they're part aren't of the animals. Aren't they animals? animals? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything else on 1.6? Any comments on 1.7? I think we've killed 1.8. Mm -hmm. Not, we didn't not literally, <laughs> but metaf metaphorically. Uh, 1.9, work to ensure that all citizens live in a healthy environment. I, my, my preference is to uh, continue to minimize pollution and advocate for Sammamish citizens living healthy. But that's, that's just a wordsmithing, wordsmithing thing. And my preference is to stop at the environment, not to per continue with, with minimal <laughs> exposure to pollution. Mm -hmm. Minimal is sort of, you know, it's, it's a marker, it's subjective. Yeah. It's it, what's it minimal implies a means. standard. Yeah. Yep. I thought you'd comment that. Any other comments on it? Right. Uh, 110. Uh, I just had a, um, the wording in the beginning of the sentence is kind of weird. Use best available science techniques. Um, I, I think it's techniques. best available techniques. science to adopt okay. techniques. Well, to, to, to guide decision making, right? Yeah, some, yeah something like that. One other thought there is that this only talks about critical areas, but I think we are talking about use of best available science in every sphere of environmental uh, improvement. It's sort of directly coming from critical areas regulations, but it should not give us the sense that best available science is only useful for critical areas. So how do we make sure that it is not only for critical areas? Uh, to preserve, protect, and enhance environmental functions and values through policies, regulations, and incentives? Right. Okay. Best available science for everything, okay. not just for critical areas. So, so taking out was Take an example. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So where do we stop? Enhance the functions? Uh, so just take just out critical areas. Oh, I see. Just take it, yeah. Else, 11, 12. 
you can feel like wise use of renewable natural resources. I haven't heard kind of that kind of joint term. Which number you want? 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. You have encouraged the wise use of renewable natural. I mean, I haven't seen the wording of wise use of mm -hmm. natural. I'm just wondering whether you are using a jargon that's familiar to everybody or, or you wanted to, what is? I, um, I was at a conference earlier and I think I got inspired by something somebody said to me, which is why I put that, I know you write down what it, I, I made a note of it. I was in the, at the National Planning Conference and I was at a, um, there was a school that was reusing, uh, Re learning to reuse things in their art products. And their comment was, uh, waste is a resource in the wrong place, and that somebody wasn't smart enough to recognize it as a resource at the time. That's a, something that Gandhi said, is what I found out. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So I think that's, I was in Atlanta when I wrote I, this. I, I, actually, <laughs> actually, I really like that wording. Let's put that That's here. not what's here. Yeah. <laughs> we could I, put I, it in as a sidebar quote. Yeah. I think it's a good yeah. quote. Yeah. I would probably just say, like, if we take out the word wise, then okay. it probably goes well, <laughs> encourage the use of net renewable, and then it's just like, again, wise use. What is not wise use? Or Throwing it away is the idea that that's not wise. Responsible use? OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can go with that. Yeah. Deborah, I do have a question. At the very end, you say, and by example. Can you? Oh, it's like the city serving as an example. So if the city is able to show ways that it's reusing Got materials. It. Comments on 13, 14, 14. I thought the sidebar of 14 was, mm -hmm. was helpful. Mm -hmm. 15 or 16? I thought 15 was interesting, and I was wondering if that's something that's seriously. I mean, I hate to put throwaway things in our comprehensive plan. I mean, is that something that we'd really do? Are we talking about? I mean, well, I, I think of things like the Mountains I mean, to Sound I, Greenway and I mean, that I'm sort of thing. I'm not saying it. I mean, I think we should. I'm just yeah. saying, do we and are we talking about? I mean, I, there's lots of examples of where these kinds of things, these programs yeah. are, and I, I wasn't aware that the city had actually done much of that. We're talking about t pur purchasing large tracts of land um, in the region, which would mean it'd be outside of Sammamish. Well, and it isn't saying Sammamish mm -hmm. should go purchase them. It's saying you know, we're working kind of within the larger region yeah. to make those things happen, help make those things happen. Acquire doesn't necessarily limit to purchasing. I'm just thinking of Soaring Eagle Park, which is not a purchasing, but King County gave it to the city to manage it to the best use of the city citizens. So I'm assuming that kind of sort of gifting from another entity would be part of it. Evans Creek Preserve? Yeah. And um, there, the city has, uh, as you know, also worked on um, transfer of development rights programs, which um, by accepting I was some, about that, yeah. yeah, by we, accepting some yeah. development rights in the city, here? yes, yeah. in the town center, uh -huh. and so the um, some of the property that will be preserved is not inside our city, and so it includes farmlands and critical areas and that sort of thing. So we have participated in those types of programs. So I think it's a good yeah. thing to have in there. I'm all for it. I just mm -hmm. wondered. I hate to put stuff in there and then not. I just hadn't seen a lot of examples of it, and I guess, mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, we've also worked with King County on Soaring Eagle, and as you know, we're, we've transferred a tract of Soaring Eagle to the city, so we worked hand-in-hand -hand with King County. There's also some DNR land that we've had discussions with um, in the past, so we've had a number of those efforts in the city to it's, date. It's always helpful to have something like this in your comp plan where if yeah. if there's a request for budget expenditure, you can say it's supported by policy. I mean, I just, I'm familiar with some really, really robust versions of that mm -hmm. in other areas, and so I, I just, but yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I like it, but I'm wondering, now that you mentioned TDR, I'm just wondering whether we wanted to use the TDR I actually wrote that. somewhere exactly, in the, yeah. if, if not on this, but somewhere to give a sense that TDR is something city is looking into to support uh, supporting use. Yes, um, sure. I'm I'm pretty sure Deborah can find a spot for that. <laughs> Especially given the fact that we're right at the yeah. edge of the s sending s 
places they can be sending sites. I mean, we're res we're one of the closest receiving to a lot to the sending sites, right? One of the things I've been interested in in quite a while is there's easements for the gas line and power lines running across the plateau here. They're really they're they're really great sites for being able to do nature trails and bike trails, but we don't really have a program yet set up to be able to to try to acquire those properties. If the if it's a long term goal and we establish a policy of uh, acquiring easements on the current easements mm -hmm. and giving tax incentives for that transaction. It's not a short-term thing, but long-term we can, we can maybe procure a large proportion of that, of that easement property. Okay. Commissioner Collins, what would be an example with the pipeline? That pipeline. I guess my understanding is it's a safety issue and that's it's, why... It's more safe if you have a bike trail on the pipeline than if you don't. You need to be able, you need to, be able to see small leaks and, and excavation problems. And, and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think that you could pr you could have a policy in there that doesn't necessarily specifically target that um, gas pipeline <coughs> easement. There is a trails plan, and I'd have to look to see whether there is any plan for a trail along that. It is private in private ownership, so yeah, mm -hmm. it, I don't know whether. You still purchase it the easement. Well, Possibly. If you, all you're doing is giving up a tax uh, contribution. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the way to long term get property very. Yeah, and I think if you had a policy that talked uh, in general about acquiring easements for trails, um, I mean, that's a good thing to have. And we, we do have that trails plan, which will be coming for an update. Uh, do you right know now, when is it um, right now? Well, they had, it on their, they had it on their work program to do this year, but mm -hmm. it's been kind of delayed. But we could easily translate back comments and feedback on our tracking sheet or pa our parking lot to the parks department about you know, ideas that you have. So even if it's not something we could put in the comp plan, <coughs> we could definitely make recommendations for the, bi the, the trails, bikeways, and path plan. Yeah. I wonder if this is something more for the parking lot. I'm not, not quite sure how it fits in the environmental and conservation. Or we should talk about it when we talk about trail, uh, what you meant? That's, right? that's what I mean, yeah. parking yeah. lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in the parking lot for trails. It's a good topic, but it could be yeah. relevant to something else. Something other than environment. If you've got something you want to talk Pub about, publicly owned land. I mean, it's still just a system. Well, yeah, you're talking about a use of the publicly owned land. No, we don't have it publicly owned now. You want to argue about this? A no, little bit? I'm no. done. Thank you. <laughs> good job, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Okay. <laughs> this is a light hearted conversation. <laughs> We're having fun today. I think uh, any other comments on number 16? Nope. I actually like all these examples. Good job. All right. Goal two has to do with hazard areas. Two four is my first. I just want to say on two two, just I think it's important to specify to people that don't necessarily know we're talking about the hundred year floodplain. I assume you're talking about the hundred year floodplain. Yep. Okay. It's also an educational document to some extent. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about the hundred year yes. floodplain. Uh, yes, we are. And I should mention, um, actually it's gonna be true in every element. We are gonna have a little introductory paragraph that sets some of that context. Mm -hmm. So we haven't written that yet, but we will do a little description of what we're talking about at the beginning. But you're right, we we should incorporate it in uh, into the policies too. Okay. We incorporate but it, I guess the cautionary statement would be if we specifically say 100-year floodplain, that's about to change. So anytime we talk about 100-year, 200-year, 500-year, those markers are continually changing depending on the scenarios. Yeah. So I, I like the generic language so that we don't have to change it every time USGS goes from 100-year to 200-year because of climate change or some other vulnerabilities. I don't know, people, I just feel like people think, oh, it floods a lot in, in my yard, so that must be a floodplain as That's opposed to a, del a, ma a delineated, oh, okay. mapped, specified Some thing by a governing body that I delineates. What if we kept the What if we kept the policy language, but added a little text box that provided that context yeah. to describe it? Defining floodplains, maybe that's what the topic is. Just yeah. your backyard flooding backyard is not part of the floodplains. Right. Right. So we'll we'll add a little box there that clarifies that. On uh, EC 2.3, not 2.2, strive towards no net less no <laughs> net loss of natural systems values. And I'm wondering whether it's, I mean, no net loss of 
especially critical areas, is is not only a goal, it is uh, the executive order nationally, statewide, and other ways. So I'm just wondering whether strive toward is the right wording or somehow we need to make comply. a statement that's what comply it is. With. Comply with not. Strive towards makes can voluntarily see what you can do. But it isn't, I mean, from Booth Gardner to every other governor in the state of Washington had made it state policy. Well, then I would say let's just take it out. Because uh, if that's, you know, if, if, if we're talking, you're, you're right, when we're talking about a regulatory item, we've yeah. said let's leave it out. Um, and there's no real need for it. Unless it's something other than 100-year floodplain. 100-year floodplain is oh, already mandated that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there could be other areas that are going to start flooding. I mean, we don't know. All right. right, we'll go back and look at that and see okay. if we can clarify. I'm only commenting on the VAR, the use of the VAR, whether that this is right. the strive, or something else. Right. Strive toward versus yeah. maintain. Yeah. Emily is just reminding me that the, the regulated floodplain is a very small, yeah. yeah, small area of Sammamish. It's kind of important to make sure that people don't apply that term broadly. Right. But if impervious surfaces aren't well managed and there is significant precipitation increase, we don't know what's going to happen. That's my point about 100 year floodplain. About not having yeah. it. Yeah, but year. we don't yeah. get the. the, yeah. the Can I just say on 2.3, there was a suggestion to flip that sentence around to make it read a little more clearly. When development occurs on in floodplain areas, mm -hmm. seek to minimize risk to people, property, and the environment, yeah, that's what period. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Geologic hazards? Oh, uh, this also I'll just say on 2.4, um, this was one that Eric LaFrance did review at the request of Commissioner Collins, and his recommendation is that we um, end the sentence after existing vegetation. Promote soil stability through retention of existing vegetation, period. Mm -hmm. Deborah, can you talk a little louder? It would help you. Okay. Thank you. I'll try. Any, any comments on that change? I think that makes sense. Yeah. It's a little more complicated than that because our, our transportation of, of stormwater is more complicated than that, but we'll talk about that on the third. Yeah, and then when we were talking about critical areas a year ago, we went into that in the whole natural drainage, whether na natural drainage should be used as uh, people's way of mitigating stormwater. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of wonder whether, I, mean, I like the idea of stopping right there because if we continue, then we might give ideas to some people that that's how we can avoid right. controlling stormwater. Interesting. Right. Uh, 2.5, I think, Commissioner Collins, didn't you have a comment on 2.5 about minimize erosion during construction and after? And use is, is good enough. Um, okay. my, my Controlling erosion hazards should be a 24-hour-a-day job, yeah. and and it's not just when you use something, and it's not just when you construct something. The policies have to be there of putting no water, no new water at all on a ero on erosion surfaces, or you're just going to have continuing problems. Our, our 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 soils here are so fragile, you just don't want to create a problem that you can't fix. And, and there's all kinds of examples in the area about of those types of soils. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't limit it to construction, and I wouldn't limit it to use. Yes. I, I'd keep it yeah. almost all the time. Well, should we just end the sentence after minimize erosion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we are talking about safety, not just construction mm -hmm. lead. And Pollution. safety that you can never fix. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like s yeah. Snake Road. I mean, yep. it's going to be really expensive to fix that. I drove up that again the other day. How bad is it? Looks bad on the pictures. It's not too bad. It's really? A little bumpy. Bumpy's not good on the smooth road. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other comments on 2.5? 2.6, 2.7. 
I have one on 2.6. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that the second part of that sentence is what we're really talking about, and the first part is very regulatory sounding. So could, could we flip the sentence and then be a little broader? Yes. So the emphasis becomes on not having impacts to life and property. Right. And that, it's, that's the, what we're yep. really talking about. Okay. And, and that's in how we handle okay. landslide hazard areas. Yeah, we can flip it. That makes sense. We're moving on to three. I would have the same comment on 3.1 mm -hmm. and about strive, striving to achieve, to more like achieve. You know, I would rather say achieve, no net loss. Okay. Because that's a regulatory requirement we have. On us. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's maybe the same as 2.2. Yeah. .2. It's, it's mm -hmm. it's not net loss right. of wetland is a regulatory requirement. Yeah, we'll right. Yeah. So it's not a striving. We could have a policy that says comply with state law too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we keep it, then strike out, strike two. Right. Let's use achieve, not at loss. Unless you're trying to emphasize the base and the thing. Is the base and thing we're doing? Yes. I think we can delete it. No, because that's in the code as well. Right. Yeah. 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 Or even the watershed hold. Yep. yep. My next one's 4.5. So uh, let's go through okay, quickly yeah, on that's uh, Let's go through quickly on the other ones to see if we have anything. 3.3. Three. Comment on 3.3. Three. Okay. Uh, what is the objective of 3.3? Because three? again, this is very regulatory. Yeah, you know, and I will admit as I look at these again, I in part of my, what I was thinking about was providing some policy support for some of the regulations. And so, but I may have gone too far in terms of actually describing the regulations. I think so. So that's, um, I guess if, if I can go back and look at some of these and maybe generalize them a little bit to just talk about why we're protecting wetlands and what the value is, uh, I think that would clean up some of the concerns that you've described. And I would probably refer you to our recently completed critical areas regulations. I think we had specific languages about just what you were talking. So we, if you put something, I would rather want to be consistent with what we have in our approval. Okay, that's a great suggestion. I think the thing we have to be careful about is that we don't preclude something that we get smarter about later. Right, no, I agree, yeah. So for in this area and maybe in a few others, we'll go back and we'll kind of try and deregulize it and make it more of a policy statement that is uh, supporting these kinds of regulations. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's one thing. The other thing I want to make sure that we are in sync with our latest yes. uh, approved okay. regulations for critical areas in and terms of using vocabularies, using the language and everything else. Okay. I think 3.7 similarly, I think, goes back to our regulations. We have something we specifically built in about our low quality wetlands. Mm -hmm. And we don't probably set them as low quality wetlands. I, yeah. I think classification class, class four three, or class something. So yeah. I would again urge you to yeah. go and look at our regulations. Okay. Anything else on 3, 3.8, 3.9? I have a question about 3.8, but it kind of gets at a larger question, which is, and this is maybe because I don't have all, a lot of the history, but it, it gets a little kitchen sink -y, y to me, like it enables, like, I don't know how serious we are about considering that, and is it just important to have language so that if you want to do it in the future, but then what's to keep, I guess it's a little bit of a process thing, so I'm curious what the tolerance is for creating more of these districts, and if that's something that we just want to enable in case that comes up. And if that's the case, then do we do that for lots of things? Because otherwise it ends up being kind of kitchen sink. Do, do you see what I'm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that particular case, we already have a special wetland overlay designation. Yeah. We have two oh, overlays yeah. in the city, and one is for wetland management areas, and the other is for the erosion hazard near sensitive water body 
uh, overlay. So we kind of already have those. Um, you could, you know, we could maybe generalize that a little more just to be supportive of those designations. And they're primarily related to the bog wetlands that we have in the city. And so they are actually special and unique and deserving of particular attention. But, um, you know, we could work with that policy. I mean, we also have no disturbance zone currently within the city, so that goes along with what city has. So then it's where this is considered designation. I mean, I don't know. I mean maybe the, the, prob the problem is the management style and having all these different districts, whether well, or not we want to get into that. Yeah, or you could even, I mean, you could generalize it further into just, uh, um, you know, having more broad direction. Because really to protect those wetlands, those provisions could just, and have kind of been incorporated into our critical areas regulations. So um, this particular of uh, being an overlay district, I'm not sure is very critical. It's just that the, the provisions are there. I, I, I mean, but we can say something like support, like Beaver Lake management area, I mean, sure. I mean, those types of volunteer organizations, they do good work for the most part. Yeah, I think we there's some policy language in there around, um, mm, oh, yeah, maybe it, there was some specific language that was quite um, talking about Beaver Lake Management District and Pine Lake Management District. And I think we generalized it to um, organizations or something of that sort. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I think this can be generalized to consider techniques to protect specific, unique, and outstanding sure. because it, it could be an overlay, it could be sure. something else. I think I'm also having, having as much trouble with the concept of consider, which gets back to the, the purpose of the document. Mm -hmm. And if everything that is worth considering gets included, it could get very long. And so I guess I just, is that something in particular we're interested in considering? And if it's something we're really interested in, then it's considering strong enough language. It just feels a little bit like lack of, you don't have to decide then, and is that a good thing? Oh, and that's I how see. you get the prop, the I document see. gets really big and meaningless if. Wh which document the, are you? Comp the comp plan. plan. So if you have everything that's worth considering in as a sentence that begins with consider doing this, mm -hmm. The document so becomes much. not much guide. So I, I was kind of using this as an example of something that I'm not really clear on in terms of what we, how we decide what goes in, what stays, and what kind of direction we're saying by what are we, what message are we sending by keeping it in? And if we think well, it's worth considering, and then therefore it should be in the document. Well, gosh, there's probably a lot of things worth considering. So it feels a little undisciplined. I don't know. Am I? So this gets to the whole issue of what's a policy that we spent a lot of time talking about earlier on. And we didn't put, we tried not to put everything in the comp plan that you could have put in. We did try to put things that sort of seemed to rise up and be more significant for Sammamish. We did intentionally try to use some language that wasn't, uh, I guess, really mandating action, but was more providing general support. So you see things where there's consider and support and encourage. And that was um, a really an intentional style that we used. However, if it feels too squishy, we need to talk about that. Or if it feels like we're just, we are throwing in things that are not relevant. I think that's the kind of feedback we want to get uh, from you. Well, I'm really kind of more asking the question and I'm okay. you know, yeah, newer and, at this. And, and I, I understand the, the question, Cynthia. I think it's um, and Deborah, it's not about whether it's squishy or not, but it's if we're going to consider this, then why shouldn't we consider, you know, underground roads and all throughout some hours? Just as well, an example. Well, maybe the answer it, is because it's dumb and we're not that close. It's an absurd uh, solution. But I mean, but so what I, is I the think, meaning between? I, it? I think the the things that we decide to put in here that we want to consider are things that are derived from our vision. You know, it's, it's the things that, that we consider unique and special to Sammamish that, that we actually mm -hmm. want to take some time to think about. And other things like, you know, underground roads um, is, is, is kind of not in Sammamish's vision. And, and just to use this one as an example, the idea that Sammamish does have unique and outstanding wetlands that need to be yeah. protected, and there are different ways to do that. The city has already got these special management districts, and so we wanted to have some support for those in here in case there was a question and may or may not want to change those or enlarge them or you know do something in the future so we wanted to have something in here but you know the word could easily just as easily be support I, I um, think support is a good word here I hear the argument about consider being you know meaning everything to everybody to more of 
unique values that Sammamish has and one of the management practices Sammamish has taken is special yeah. overlay yeah. Uh, areas. Okay. And now that we know Arwan is not going to be part of our story and Arwan has a very uh, direct linkage to special yeah. overlay well, area. It's often yes. So, so I guess I go back and I say that with agreeing with chair, it's really protecting special, uni special, unique, and outstanding wetlands. And maybe either we say support designation of special overlay because which we already have, or keep it generic, but we need support to mention techniques. to protect specific and unique wetlands because that's really the goal. How we are getting there, right at that moment, we are going through a special overlay district. I don't think we've answered Cynthia's question. I think Cynthia's question was, if we have a bunch of things that say consider, what about the things that aren't in here? Is, wasn't that your question? Well, yeah, but I think maybe their chair's response to that is, well, we've bubbled up some to the top, and they're worth putting in here. So, well, or do you want some generalized language that says, Z, you know, we could do other things that aren't in here? I mean, that's the other way to handle it. Well, well Deborah had the suggestions uh, use support instead of consider. Well, that deals with this particular. Yeah. Right, and we have that throughout. So, I, I mean, I guess I'm not sure it's a, a question that has to be answered. It, this is you, the discussion has helped me for what it's worth. We tried to make, we attempted to make the um, kind of a determination of what was applicable to Sammamish and what was seemed to be important based on your current plan, regional plans, and the conditions here and your vision statement. And I guess part of what we would like from you is if there's things that we've missed um, to get that feedback. So, because uh, we certainly don't want to include everything or have some blanket statement about, and there's lots of other things we could do, which wouldn't be very helpful. Consider creativity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that's one that we probably yeah. wouldn't really want to put in here. All right. Okay. Well, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do we need to add to that? <laughs> Goal four. Goal four. I like 3.9, so we can move to goal four. <laughs> you like efficiency. I do. Any comments on goal four? Thoughts? Policies general? Four, one through four, three. I'm 4.5. Anybody else got anything before that? Okay. A generic comment for Deborah. Again, we have in our ECA regulations, we have talked about wildlife preservation. So I just wanted to make sure whatever you're putting in here, wording-wise, vocabulary-wise, needs to be consistent with the regulations because people should be reading comp plan and then going to the regulation and find the corresponding one-to-one -one support. All right. So just looking for the consistency. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're on 4.5. I'd say after vegetation and prevent, I'd replace the and prevent with to reduce the spread of. And then the delete the, the and their spread, spread. Uh, yeah. after that? Yes. Okay. I, I don't know how you can really prevent evasive. Okay. So you can control them, but you can't prevent them. Magic. Four, six, four, seven. Has anybody got anything? Uh, just let me know if you got something coming up. Four, eight. Five, nineteen. So you, okay. I'm just wondering this. whether we use the word animals or wildlife. I mean, just going back to Commissioner Collins' word about hum, human animal plant. Just wondering, just the word animals. Which so one? as a as a header to four point eight. Yeah, header to four point eight. Oh. Should it be wildlife or should it be animals? Sure. Wildlife. Does that sound better? Because you talk about wildlife human? species, actually, mm -hmm. so yep. it has to be wildlife. Sounds fun. Does anybody have anything yes. before goal five? Just give us a second. Quickly, 
Deborah, just real quick, can you the words that are in brackets, like after mm -hmm. policy four point seventeen sustainability framework? Because there, there are others that are. Okay, let's see if I can find another one. Um, what what is what those? Is that? I don't know if you recall when we went through the sustainability framework goals and, and our principles and policies, mm -hmm. we identified sort of blocks of policies that would incorporate into other elements. Right. And so these were just to highlight that we'd actually caught those and put okay. them in. These came directly out of that sustainability framework. Good. Thank you. Are, are those words going to stay or? Uh, you know what? We might. We, what we talked about uh, is having a little icon that shows that those come out of sustainability. So the words probably won't be there, but there may be a little symbol that shows that. Are we moving five? Goal five. Goal five. On the header, my question about the word system and maintain a surface water and groundwater system. I would like to see the replacement of the word system to resources, mm. surface water and groundwater resources instead of system. Or Comments on uh, policy 5.1? I would suggest in your generalization, you might want to take out the part at the end. The through incentives, et cetera? The okay. part that says through incentives, regulations, and programs. Okay. Which one? On um, 5.1. Okay. At the end of 5.1. Question about 5.2? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. So, I guess this question is for others that know more about this than I do, but it seems weird that we would say watershed and or sub-basin basis. I mean, do we, does it matter that we're not, I mean, which is it? <laughs> yeah. uh, do we care? Mm. Well, sub I, I think at different levels, those different things mean appropriately. It, it, or maybe it's the ab and or, I mean. Well, it's whether it's planning within a watershed basis or within the sub basis. So smaller increments or larger increments of planning that whichever. But I, uh, but yeah. I think I'm saying that for watershed management, both are important. In some cases, we should be within RIIA. In some cases, we should be yeah. looking holistically in, in the entire Puget Sound watershed. I guess maybe it's like it should be at all levels, I guess. Is, yeah. Okay. okay. I that's guess that's what that means. It just the and yeah. or kind of. Yeah. I, I understand I, I, the concept, yeah. but I was just maybe getting a little hung up with the, the language. Yeah. Like we're trying to pick which. And I think it's. I, I think it's. Yeah. Case by case. Okay. Yeah. It might be. It might be a stream, which is very. But specific. I think. But this language doesn't yeah. say and that or, to me. It says no. more like, "Hey, we're going to decide later," as if. So we could, the on all levels. Would and you like that? I, I, or, or just and and delete. The yeah, and I think yeah. it was the and okay. or that got and me a little doesn't hung up. Get, get rid yeah. of the or. Okay. Yeah, the and the get rid of the or because the and makes it seem like. Take the slash and or. Okay, you know? got it. Oh, sorry, I just got, it. got a little. Yeah, makes sense. Five three. Good language. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. River streams and lakes five four five five and five six. Looks good to me. Yeah. Okay. Surface water management. Five to nine. The only one there is I'd add a the in, in front of in rehab, rehabilitation and the rehabilitation. I don't know what 5.7 means. So does that, do other people understand that? It, may, it might just be me. This came from, this comes from the current plan, and I, I believe the intention here was this issue of balance and trying to fit sort of balance needs. When I, read, when I read best community fit, 
I was thinking about the land use pattern and kind of the needs, sort of the human needs and the natural needs and looking for a best fit. I think it's the cold word of saying that we are just not going to adopt everything King County has. Yeah. I, I think the term best community fit is something that will cause grief later because yeah. it's not things people are going to know. Either people won't know what it means or there will be lots of different, they, they'll think they know what it means, but they won't think the same thing. Would you like an example it's, of what I think it is? I'm sorry? Would you like an example of what I think it is? Sure. Um, the Pine Lake uh, Shopping Center area, they required a phosphorus filter that yeah. took out 70% of the phosphorus before it drained down into Pine Lake. That was a community uh, fit thing. It wasn't in code at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So it allowed them to exceed the existing standards for that development. So maybe there's a better way to say it. I uh, think that's it. Yeah. Without taking out the word community, best community fit to something else. Example is a good one. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a great example. example. So you're talking about being able to exceed the standards. It had such a huge impact mm -hmm. on the lake. They had to take care of it. We'll, we'll work on some yeah. words that are clearer there. Okay, thank you. And I think one other comment I would make there is that Sammamish is unique in the sense that we have people like Watershed, specific people like Watershed District, and then we have specific management practices on Pine Lake. So those specific mm -hmm. requirements are unique to Sammamish. I wonder whether the best community feed keeps that flavor to people who would read it. So again, regurgitating the same thing, I do like to see a different wording that mm -hmm. gives that meaning to us. Okay. And we have LID on the next one, good. Only change on 5.8, I think when you spell out the word low impact development, I wanted to see in the parenthesis LID right okay. there, because a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. even though it's there, mm -hmm. a lot of people just know what LID is, but they don't mm -hmm. quite read the low impact development. Sure, so okay. Having both ways help. I wonder about the end of that 5.8. I'm not sh sure whether that belongs there. Into development standards and incentives? Oh, yeah. I mean, is this saying that, 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 that we're so going to create, that we're, we're going to put LID measures in the development standards? Is that what it's intended to say? That's how you'd implement them, yeah. But we don't have is to even say that. We could just yeah. say preserve natural yeah. discharge yeah. patterns. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. It could be a sentence structure thing, too. But mm -hmm. just take, yeah, I, take I a think look if you that. use 5.8 as a model, it would help with the 5.7 because what we're doing in 5.8 is what I think we need to do in 5.7. Chop it off? We're Chop off part of it? what the objective is. Right, okay. On, on 5.10, when we talk about vegetation retention, is the generic vegetation retention also mean trees, mature trees? Yes, although we've got a specific That's piece on trees concern. later. Yeah. yeah, I mean... What does <laughs> the definition of vegetation in that context mean? Like shrubberies, not really trees with branches? Well, I, I guess... Which one? Uh, 510. Really was intended to be all-inclusive. And as I'm looking at this one, you also could get rid of that first clause and just say maximize vegetation retention, et cetera. Okay. Um, but w would you like us to clarify what we mean by vegetation? I just wanted to make sure we'll have tree retention ordinance and whatever later on, so we are consistent with the language, whatever we mean by vegetation, either it is uh, tree means something different from vegetation or it is inclusive of vegetation. Yeah. Just wanted to have the clarity. I'm also wondering if, um, if, if the idea of, that really what we're talking about is how it performs against the objective in stormwater. So whether you're talking about trees or not, it, it really the issue is what is the it, it could be other things depending on the, right. where you're at yeah. where, where it occurs like parking lots but what yeah. we care about yeah. at the end of the day is how they perform right. against the objective of stormwater management surface water surface water management yeah. so whether I guess I'm okay with that 
because uh, now I can see the vegetation in the context of context of current regulation mean very specific vegetation requirements, uh, and maybe that's what he meant to say there. We have vegetation requirements for all of those uh, surface water management right. yeah. regulations, so maybe that's what he meant. So I guess it's a question, is it a specific vegetation requirement based on the regulations we have? Is that what we are talking this about? Is, this was, I think, a little broad, just a, a broader policy that was saying for the purposes of helping manage surface water to maximize uh, vegetation retention. It was pretty broad level. So we are not talking about tree canopies, that's a different, totally no, different subject. No, no, yeah. yeah. That's, like, that's at the very end. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on... Uh, Five, eleven, twelve, thirteen. My next one's fifteen. Okay. Oh. Groundwater and aquifer protection. Yeah. And, and basically, and all, all I'm just wanting to delete is uh, where needed the last two words on the sentence. How is well, 15 different than 5 we actually got some, uh, this was one where I think just based on a couple of your comments, we took it back to Eric to take a look at, and he has proposed this language, protect groundwater quality through the use of the most current groundwater protection standards, period. He would like us to get rid of the uh, PGS little text box there and, and broaden, out, broaden that out. Cool. I'm fine with that. Does that replace 515 or 514? That re that's a revision to 515. So pr I'll to protect groundwater quality through the use of the most current groundwater protection standards. And why did you want to get rid of the box? Um, I, I didn't. I, I, I think we took out the term PG, you know, the pollution generating surface oh, reference. Not, not I don't know. I still don't understand the difference between 14 and 15. What is well, for, uh, I guess 14, um, they're s similar, I grant you that. The 14 is, is, more is more broad, was just tended to be a really broad policy statement, and then 15 was intending to talk more specifically about... Um, protections. Er, initially, it was to talk about the PGS, but here he's broadened it to talk about um, protection standards. You need to get rid of 14, no, 14 is for your aquifer, so like yeah. that'd be an aquifer recharge area. Well, I, I see a little bit differently that we're talking about uh, – oh, never mind, i take that back. Uh, but I, I, I'm a little concerned with the language that Eric is suggesting because it seems circular. Our comp plan is supposed to direct regulations, and if the comp plan is just saying adopt regulations but not what those regulations are supposed to do, I'm – I'm a little, little bit confused. Could, could you reread the box as proposed by Eric? Oh, the box would be deleted altogether. Completely. Yes. I think I like the way it is now. I hear Chair's argument, and what I think Eric's added language does not add any value. Like we could, we might as well just stay with the uh, header. Uh, uh, are, you, are you saying the? The, the sentence or the box? What his reasoning was. I, I don't like deleting the box. I, I like you. his I like his sentence though. But if you delete if you don't delete the box, then the sentence doesn't make sense because it's an example of pollution prevention <laughs> generating surfaces, and he doesn't want pollution but, generating. But but I think pesticides and sports fields and all this other stuff are important. I, I like the box I because of that. Box. That's why I like everything the way it is. <laughs> oh, his sentence is better. I mean. You okay. want it more broad. Yeah. Emily? Um, Chairman Cullen, I would like to make a recommendation that the Planning Commission maybe table this discussion until we can get Eric okay. back, and he could, he's, yeah. he'd be more than willing to talk yeah. about these draft goals and policies in the environment mm -hmm. and in the utilities as well, because he did, have, he did have some very strong feelings with the words in the box and um, some reasons yeah. why. He didn't just say that for no reason. He, he definitely had some strong reasons, and he'd be better to 
talk to you about that in I person. Agree. Let's take it up with him. Can you yeah. let him know we like the box? So yeah. he's got to come prepared. I, I will let him know you like the box, but he's probably going to tell you that it's um, an, it, impossible for the box to stay. That's fine. I, you know, it might be that that term pollution generating surface, which has a real definition, yes, is the issue. Yeah. And it may be that we can keep some of the more descriptive sure he, piece of it. He deals with the two, uh, the two items together? Sure. Good. Okay. All right. So we'll table 14 and 15. Um, I mean, should we do the same for 16, 17, 18? Just kind of have them walk us through all five of those? Sure. Ones? Are there comments or questions yes. on those as well that no. we need to highlight for them? 16, 17, and 18. The rest under water and aquifer. Yeah, I don't have any more. They're very soft. Okay. I'm fine with them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Goal six. Clean air. Clean air. For now and forever. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I did. Um, I also submitted a comment for a, a 519 that isn't on the list. So if Eric has that terminology, that'd be great. Five. Implement best management practices contained in the new stormwater um, development manual for parking lots. Uh, oh. Runoff shall be directed into parking lot drainage areas, basically landscaping. The new designs that are coming out in the new manual are are light years ahead of our I current standards. Is that is that in utilities or is that in this? It's, it's, it's groundwater protection. Five. I don't have a 519. No, I'm proposing. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I sent it to you. Okay. I, 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 okay. So if you could include that in what Eric's talking about, that'd be great. But retrofitting our current, I don't, uh, our current parking lots are, are going to be way behind code, and I'd like to see some mechanism to be able to upgrade those. For example, that they drain into landscaping strips instead of away from landscaping strips. So just, I'll, can I, is it all right if I read what you sent us again, just sure. for the commission's benefit? This, this would be a new 519. Implement uh, BMPs contained in the new stormwater manual for parking lots. Runoff shall be directed uh, to parking lot drainage areas, parens landscaping, and treated as much as possible there. The goal being no downstream pollution offsite. Correct. I, I think it's, it's a great concept. Um, I'm a little concerned it's specific. And, and we've already talked about BMPs in here. Um, I, I think we're I think we're covered is I guess what I'm getting at is through other policies I think we've got we've got adequate we, coverage. We, we don't really retrofit existing parking lots. Who's paying for it? Uh, well, it, it's when they get redeveloped. We want we want to make sure they. This is a thing that is we're not giving up. This is this is one of the conditions of redevelopments. Okay, that's a that's a standard. That's a regulation that. The city. I'd, I'd like to support it in the comp plan. I'm, I'm really concerned about our parking lots. And, and I, we've talked about BMPs. I, 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 I think we're covered. I, mean, I think I it should probably be given as an example. I think, like Chair, well, first of all, I support that we need to cover okay. it somewhere, but I just don't see it's a good fit language for the comp plan where we are talking about larger policies, not specific implementation. But while I said that, I would like to see it somewhere fleshed out so that it has its meanings. I but think not a, here. I think redevelopment kind of policy is a is an excellent point. Um, all I'm really after is that if Eric can read it and maybe if he thinks okay. it's appropriate, he can address it when he talks to us. Thank you. Thank you. Send it to Eric. Are we on the clean air part? I think that's where we were. My next one's six point four. Uh, the only thing on the clean air part, one thing I see the city has done a great job over the time with uh, town center development as an example to uh, foster growth of transit-oriented development, uh -huh. TODs. And transit-oriented development is a great measure to reduce air pollution, uh, vehicular air pollution. So I, I wanted to s just see that concept or even the wording of transit-oriented development where feasible, something like encourage transit-oriented development where feasible, that we were not saying it's everywhere. It's mainly along 28 and half a mile on this side. So I just wanted to see the wording of transit-oriented development in the company. I think that could be in 6.4, mm -hmm. something like that. So rewordings, yes. Sure. It, it could be easily added there. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
it's 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 a vocabulary that will stay with us for a long time. It's already there, and we need to have it. Um, the, the transfer development. Yeah, or land use. I mean, that's sort of the same. I, I, we can put the concept in here, I think, and, and acknowledge that it has a contribution, but I, I think that we'd accompany it with a text box referring off to other sections that may have more specific yeah, policy I, guidance for, the, for that. I'm fine. We, in whatever ways you can inject the word transit into okay. the development. Okay. But here yes. or in other elements of the complex? I think he wants it here. As long as is, is it's another way of, yes. of protecting our air quality. Yes. I mean, we are promoting transit car share. I think it belongs to that that area. Okay. Uh, I just don't have the way to configure the sentence. Mm -hmm. I'm just put, giving you the word that I would like to yes. see it somewhere there. I do want to say, though, that I do support the concept, and this is where I struggle a little with efficiency and making it not too big, but so many of these things are interrelated. Right. And I think that not only are they interrelated, that's not obvious to people who don't think hard about these things. And so where there's opportunities, and again, to the point that the comp plan is a, is a document that has of one purpose is to sort of educate or make give people background. So I do support the idea of drawing those connections. And so, know, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not suggesting a particular way to do it, but I just want to echo that point. C connecting those dots for people, yeah. this is a good place to Absolutely. Do. And it, would you be all right with the concept of referring then to the other elements where there would be more Maybe a box. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And my thing on uh, 6.4 is I, I like specific sightings, but I understand that you don't like them in a lot of times. I, I would include examples of Uber and other on-demand car services and technologies. For example, Google Car. Um, our, our problem in this community is being able to get from home to the transit center. Right. And there's no real way of doing that right now. So I think that word car sharing yeah. sort of gets that. I mean, using specific Brands lingo of today, like Uber, and could be quite controversial today. But car sharing is the means. But, but I, the technology of just making people, having people sign up on uh, on a website, mm -hmm. I mean, just the website itself saves car trips. How about something yeah. about just the information-based uh, or technology-based or whatever the current, I, I think here today, gone tomorrow, I'm, I, I would, I also would be concerned with including specific ones, but but to somehow get at the Plus, it's a stab at Seattle for going so heavy on internet tomorrow. It may be something else tomorrow. Right. 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 So yeah. I, I, I actually think that uh, I agree with you, Commissioner Collins, but I think that the sentiment is captured in the car sharing phrase. You're fine? Yeah. I, I believe so. Okay. Thank yep. you. Withdrawn. It's the goal is to sh increase car sharing. Right. right. That's yep. happening. Yep. Cycling. Walking. Yeah. Deborah, I have a question. Um, Anyone else? Six, if we're done with 6.5, uh, B, encouraging dust abatement, that implies that it's, <laughs> oh, it's optional. All right, all right. <laughs> it's required. Yeah, awesome. Got it. And, and on E, instead of considering, I'd like just transmission to low emission. You want to have, you want to see, you want the word sure, maybe? I just, I, I just want to transition to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't I mean, want to think about it. I don't want to consider it. I just want to direct words, it right yeah. there. Considering transitioning <laughs> doesn't make sense. Just, just one thing. Just transition to it. Yep. Yeah. You don't have to think about it anymore. I think that's where we are today, right? I mean, any vehicle city buys has to be LEV or ZEV. Um, yeah, as you know, we have a couple of electric vehicles, yeah. and um, I think there's a high consideration of of that as we replace yeah. our older vehicles. That's correct. So I think transition two would be amenable to the city's current practices. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it obvious that we're talking just about city vehicles? It, yeah, it says like municipal, public, municipal vehicle fleet. Oh, sorry. Like we cannot regulate Thank individual. You. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, sorry, yeah. I missed that. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> right. Okay, me too. My next one's 9.1, so. Okay. Well, I just have a comment on 6 points. Sorry if I have 6 to cut anybody. On 6.6, 6, okay. uh, we are committing, well, I mean, in complaint, we don't commit anything, but we are asking ourselves to conduct public health educate, 
about indoor air. I'm just wondering whether is this city is willing able to do or this is a ca county health district it's probably more issue? of a county health district i'm i'm fine with it if city is willing yeah. able to do but i just yeah. see a commitment there that you are making so Actually, we Deborah, could question how would we go about doing that public education kinds of programs we, well specifically about it, like indoor air quality would it be something like having a booth that the farmers market or you could you could have a booth at the farmers market you could um, do outreach to sort of like we're doing with the plan right now to just different agencies and groups you could stick okay. flyers into utility bills yeah. or that sort of thing summertime King County participates in a lot of farmer market kind of areas where they go for radon indoor air and other issues they give you a kit free kit to test right. certain things and mm -hmm. Assuming that's what we do. Oh, but, newsletter? Okay. but I think you're city right. The, the city doesn't have that expertise. It's King County Health that has that. And so we could say I, advocate I'm, I'm for. I'm not asking or, you to delete anything. I'm just making sure that the city yeah. knows what, what's being put yeah. Well, I think the verb might be advocate for or support okay. or something like that. Okay. In 7.1, I'm sorry, I thought we. Do we really want to put um, reduction and uh, adaptation and mitigation in the same, all just in the same? I just think they're two, they can be two really different activities. And What's so adverse? Seven one. Seven one. It's, it's adaptation and mitigation. Adaptation is, you already know it's there, now you need to prepare for it, how to change your lifestyle, and mitigation is really preventing, reducing. And I think I, like Commissioner Cross's comment that if we put them together, we don't quite get the clarity. So maybe adapt one for adaptation and one for mitigation because we are doing both. We are mitigating by employing low emissions vehicles, transit oriented development, biking, everything else. Then we are also doing something about adaptation to prepare for imminent right. danger that's coming to us. So the, the um, might be just how we wrote this, but the emphasis was really, we wanted to really emphasize the idea of a multi, sort of working in concert with the region as a whole. And um, it, was le it was, so it was more on that idea of regional coordination and less on the idea of the specific activities. And so, but we said both just to encompass them both. So we could maybe reword that so it. it um, so one suggestion could be taking out from to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and address those things taken okay. out. If you just say support multi-jurisdictional efforts uh, to address the impacts of climate change and how is taken out adaptation and mitigation. But I also like adaptation mitigation should be somewhere spelled out if that's possible. And we do try and address that, although we don't get super specific. We do try and address that in some of the following policies. Yeah, like 7-6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 7-3 mitigation. Do we really, do we really need 7.5? Isn't that part of SEPA? Now, consider climate change effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether you consider <laughs> Is the question we don't need it because we are already doing it? It's required under SEPA. Not yeah, and yeah. and SEPA, when you're doing uh, project level review for SEPA, you often look to your comp plan for support of what you're asking of the mitigation that you're seeking. And so, again, that was a way of trying to provide support um, I for it. I agree with Emily's comment. Not everything goes through SEPA, but it, it, at some level, something will go through SEPA when we're talking about proposed. When, when I think of proposed development, I'm thinking of a plat, a subdivision mm -hmm. that goes through SEPA. A single family house does and it's exempt. Um, yeah, but I like Emily's comments. My thought would be taken taking out the consider, rather it's a requirement, it's not just a soft consideration. So we should say, analyze climate change impacts when conducting review of whatever we're doing. 
That's my point. That's that's yeah. a regulation. And it doesn't belong in a comp plan as a policy statement. I see. Then how do we capture the subsets that doesn't go through SIPA process? Maybe something we need to have that for that. Well, that's a different point that Deborah just made, though, which is that this, you look to the comp plan for support when you are in a SIPA. Mm -hmm. That's what she just said. I, she, yeah. I don't um, know. Yeah. Talking about single family. No, yeah, I mean, it is a required element of SEPA. I mean, think this is a little broader because it's true that not every project goes through um, SEPA review. And as you might know at the state level, those SEPA review um, thresholds are yeah. increasing in general as we adopt our regulations. So I don't think it's a bad thing to have this in here. Um, it, I could see, um, say we, we institute some additional uh, SEPA thresholds and the work continues and the thresholds increase, we might still want to keep something in our development regulations related to this. So that's, um, that's at your option. So maybe instead of proposed developments and transportation projects, maybe there's something a little more general that we could put in there. Because I could even see it as, you know, if we're considering a, a major land use change, um, it doesn't have to be developments and transportation only. Mm. Right. Okay. All right. That's good. So we are substituting proposed developments and transportation projects to land use decisions? To, when conducting review of stuff. That's a technical term, right? It, it is. It's actually an acronym. You know how to say stuff in a different way. Okay. <laughs> <You get it. laughs> I think the land use decisions or land use and transportation Reference. actions, something like that, we can. Yeah, that, that's yeah. okay. Oh, conduct a review for, of an action. Well, yeah, I mean. Or change your SEPA. We're, we're just talking about how you could use this. Could be new regulations. It could be if the city, for some reason, wanted to um, assess their own SEPA threshold, local SEPA threshold level for climate oh. change or for development yeah. review. Right, right. so yeah. it, it kind of just provides some general policy support yeah, let's for that kind of thing. Let's kind of broaden it. And we don't have any regulations on this, yeah, I, so it, it just opens up the door for more possibilities. Yeah. I, I kind of like it. I mean, I don't want to give a big lecture here, but, you know, when we don't have national regulations for a lot of climate change-related activities, this empowers a city to do things as cities exactly. sees fitting to them. Yeah. I'm not saying Sammamish has to do it, but if at some point Sammamish wants to do it, it keeps the option. Robin captured it perfectly. Okay, I hear Conducting stuff. a review of stuff. <laughs> yeah. She was listening. <laughs> All right. Okay. Move on. Uh, anything else on seven before we move to goal eight? I wonder, 7.6, I understand what the community resiliency means. I wonder, I just want to have a test with our fellow commissioners. I wonder whether we all understand what those resiliencies mean. I was just today at a conference for Cascade Water Alliance, and they talked a lot about resiliency for climate change in the water infrastructure. So I do understand that, but I'm just wondering whether everyone in the room, and then, of course, the general public would understand resiliency. Is there going to be a quiz? Did they address anything for Sammamish specifically? Almost all our water sources are pretty secure. You think so? They aren't? Could we put a text it's box? A side, sidebar conversation sidebar. for later. Very, very good. Thank you. Could we? So, text box, probably. Yeah, I was just thinking about a box. Yes. A box for resiliency. We can do that. And before we go to 8, if we're ready, Emily has reminded me that it's 8.20. Um, and we've got two more sections. On 7.7, just I wanted oh, to make sorry. a comment. It sounds a little political to me. Well, I mean, when we say recognize the science surrounding climate change is constantly changing. I don't know if I wanted to say science is changing. I know it's... Knowledge? It's, <laughs> yeah, something okay. like that, yes. It's, it's science get, gets to a totally different <laughs> track for different people. Okay. Information or knowledge, yeah. Okay. Are we on eight? Yeah, I think we're on eight. Any comments on the goal or uh, we're on uh, goal eight, eight now? Okay. I'm, 
I'm glad to see those boxes for lead design practices. Okay. I'm good on it. And I think Commissioner Collins would like 8.4. That's what we discussed before. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Urban forestry. Goal nine: Urban forestry. Um, nine point one. Uh, I'm. I'd like to be more proactive. Um, I'd like to see increase instead of promote, and um, increase the city's existing tree canopy by conserving and supplementing the existing camp canopy. Implement um, a program to identify and then plant good candidate areas. I'm, I'm after finding areas to plant trees and actually having it happen. And the canopy is right now defined by very tall trees that basically have no support for the sub canopy. And, and the sub canopy is screening for almost all the developments. And I really think that lower canopy is important. Yeah. I, I feel like we, we, we would be talking about tree retention as a regulation later on. Yep. I feel a little bit premature for us to get to a whole discussion until we go to tree retention. So I'm just wondering whether we want to check for the basic direction here and then come back when we have done yes. tree regulations. And that actually was what we intended here for that very reason. We, we were a little bit mm -hmm. hesitant to go too far. Yeah. What we just handed out to you, I just wanted to ask, we talked a little bit about uh, tree canopy last time, mm -hmm. and we've uh, worked with the GIS layer a little bit more, and this is, I think last time we show, showed you kind of the, all the vegetation uh, in Sammamish. This is actually the tree canopy. And just to give you a few measures, um, that's about 47.2, 47% of the total land area. And uh, for some other cities, Kirkland is roughly 41%, uh, Bellevue's 36, Renton's close to 29, Shoreline 31. Mercer Island, 41. So that kind of gives you a sense of... Oh, so we're better than Mercer Island? <laughs> how, how accurate is this? Like on so Sahali Golf Course, I mean, even the, the fairways are, are marked as as canopy. I, the fairways aren't canopy. Fairways are canopies? Huh? Fairways are considered no, canopy. I mean, there's there's trees the showing there. <laughs> it's green, I mean... This is the GIS layer that was provided to us by the state. So we probably should fact check it, but... Um, it's what it's the data that we were I mean, given. If there's anything obvious, I mean, we should. We'd we love should to call hear about it. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, or mark it up so we can sort of see it too. These are. This is kind of a working draft map yeah. that we just kind of generated maybe in the we past few see days. This in high resolution, so that we can see exactly <laughs> what we Yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty fuzzy right now. What oh, is NDVI? Okay. Yeah. Well, what is that? It's a. It's a. Yeah, it was yeah. A, a vegetation index, and six plus we were told is trees. Less than six was else. lower understory, and that's what we pulled out of this. Yeah, is for vegetation index. I just yeah. don't know what, what is black. Was. Black is the water. water. Yeah. <laughs> well, which there's black in the middle of the city. Which we didn't count. Um, some of those are lakes. I'm not sure why some of the, I, again, the resolution, this was, yeah. this is a working draft map, yeah. so the resolution isn't great. But some the, of them are wetlands. Could be. Uh, it's, it's. It's a work in progress. It is a work in progress that we wanted to share with you because a question came up last time. Okay. This one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, tabling this, it's uh, interrelated with land use and all that, so, and tree retention discussion. Do you want to Well, do you want some guidance on I mean, there's no Okay. Um, before we wrap yeah, this up, we kind of went specifically. You said, I guess, uh, one other question is whether these policies, as general as they are, whether they are, are generally acceptable or generally going in the right direction. Uh, Emily was suggesting that just some general sense of where the policies are headed before going into the actual regs would be helpful for the city. Oh, for the you have policy before you develop regulation. Oh, for the urban forestry? Yeah. 
Sounds good, but we might come back. I mean, I, I hear Commissioner Collins wording you know, promote to more stronger language than just promoting. Yes. So we might come back. I still see it's a chicken and egg question <laughs> in, until we see right. fleshed out. We don't know how strong we want to be. Right. But generally, it sounds great. It just could be some little tweaking. So potentially maybe to make them a little more yeah. nine, robust. 9.1 9 point, 9 was the only one that I really had a problem with. Okay. And, and just so the rest of the commissioners have it, the number one complaint that I hear from, from residents is that there's a, there's a subdivision that goes in and all the trees go away, even though we're complying with our current tree canopy stuff. Yeah, it's a micro scale versus macro yep. scale. That's the question. Mm -hmm. My backyard versus the whole mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. That's a good question. Um, so before we move on, you know, we've commented specifically on all the goals and policies, but I want to check to see if commissioners think that like Deborah asked earlier, is there anything missing? Is there something that we think we might need to add or describe a little bit more? I think we're making good progress, but the thing that I'm concerned about is this is a very long process, mm -hmm. and we deal, we're dealing with pieces, and we're, we're talking about integrating later, and I don't understand how the integration is going to work. And I think that's a really big deal, and so we don't need to deal with it right this minute, but I would think that we ought to have a conversation that says this is how the pieces are going to fit together so that we can understand where we're going. And, and I, I have one more thing I'd like to talk about too and that's on the, on the page 5 of 10 of the tracking sheet. It says um, protect municipal water supply wells. I'd like to see the addition of the words and systems from contamination or degradation through strict regulation. So it's not just the wells themselves, but it's the system. And I think one other part, holistically speaking, I haven't found the word conserving. I mean, conserving water, conserving energy, conserving uh, limited resources that we have. I know in some context, we are not the water district, we are not the PSC, but our complaint is our complaint. We need to encourage our citizens to conserve those resources. So I would love to see. I don't know where it fits, but I just haven't seen the slogan of conserving things. It, it might fit under the climate change section, uh, and it, certainly you will see it under the utilities element, uh, for sure, that concept. I, I would have it on the don't waste stuff that we just put. Yes, yeah. All right, we do have on our agenda another, um, unless there's any other discussion for the commission, we do have one more opportunity for, for public comment. Um, we, we did take some on agenda before, but it's on our agenda. You can, you sure? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so that's it. Any other thoughts or comments for tonight? No. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Adjourned at 8.29 p.m. <laughs>